Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. Now if you made it to this video, my guess is that you're either a new crocheter or someone returning to the craft looking for what to do after you learn those basic stitches. There are several classic stitch patterns that you'll find in stitch dictionaries and in beginner friendly patterns. Today I'm sharing five of those classic stitch patterns plus some ideas of where to use them. Now if you're excited to learn some new stitch patterns, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and of course we can can't start stitching without giving some love to our cup of caffeine sponsor. Today's sponsor is Stuff by Joey and when donating Joey said, I was having so much trouble learning foundation stitches. I watched videos, read blogs, and went to bed frustrated. This morning your video was in my search. I should have known to start with you. Thank you for always making your tutorials so clear and easy to follow. Thank you so much for the support Joey. It means the world to me that you were able to turn to me to to find what you needed. Now, if you enjoy my content and want to support my channel, buy me a coffee. Who knows, I might shout you out in one of my videos. Please note that all stitches are in US terms. I'm using a five millimeter Clover Amour crochet hook and Lion Brand's Color Theory yarn throughout the tutorial. Find links to these items as well as all of the patterns I reference in the description. Now let's kick off this tutorial with the linen stitch. The linen stitch, also called the granite stitch or the crochet moss stitch, combines single crochet and chain stitches for a closed texture. This stitch is flexible vertically, but not so much horizontally. Makers love it for its simplicity and knit-like look. Let's see how we make it. We'll start the linen stitch by making a slip knot, placing that slip knot on the hook, and then chaining any odd number of chains. Once the chain is complete, we'll actually rotate the chain towards us to work in the back bumps of our chain. We'll identify the third chain from the hook and place a single crochet in the back bump of that chain. That is followed by a chain one. We'll skip the next chain, single crochet in the back bump of the following chain. And we'll repeat this down the line, following that with a chain one. Skip a chain, single crochet in the next, and then chain one. Skip the next chain, single crochet in the next, and chain one. The final stitch is a single crochet in the last chain, and this completes our first row. To start the next row, chain two and turn your work. Now at the base of our chain two is a single crochet. We'll skip that single crochet, place your first stitch, which is a single crochet, into the chain one space, followed by a chain one. Single crochet in the next space, and chain one, single crochet in the following space, and chain one. We'll repeat this down the line until we get to the chain two space at the end of the row. Remember that we started row one with a single crochet in the third chain from the hook. That leaves two chains at the end of the row. We'll place our last single crochet in the chain two space. This ends row two and we can move on to row three, which starts with a chain two and turning our work. Remember that there is a single crochet at the base of our chain two, and we'll skip that single crochet, place a single crochet in the first chain one space. Follow that with a chain one, and single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet in the following chain one space. We'll repeat that across the row, placing the last stitch in the final chain two space. I'm personally a huge fan of the linen stitch and I've used it in a lot of patterns. If you want to try this stitch pattern, check out my Bradley Afghan, the Odyssey Wrap, or the Patchwork Cardi patterns. Next, we'll look at the Alpine stitch. It's so named because it resembles the deciduous trees that cover the Alpine mountain range. This stitch is made by alternating normal double crochet stitches with treble crochet stitches that are worked around the post of stitches a couple rows below. The final effect is a highly textured fabric that is still lightweight. You'll fall in love with the groove of making it, I guarantee it. 
We'll start the alpine stitch by making a slip knot. Place that slip knot on the hook, tighten down, and chain any odd number of chains. We'll start row one by finding a fourth chain from the hook, here's three and four, and place a double crochet in that fourth chain from the hook. Double crochet in the next chain as well. And in each chain across the row. Row two and all even rows are worked the same. Start with a chain one, turn your work, and single crochet across the row. Place one single crochet stitch in each double crochet from row one. We'll finish the row by placing the last single crochet in the third chain of the turning chain. We'll then chain three. Here's one, two, three, which counts as our first double crochet and turn our work. So since we chain three, and that counts as our first double crochet, we'll skip the stitch at the base of the chain. The next stitch is a front post treble crochet. So we'll yarn over our hook two times, find the double crochet two rows below, insert our hook from front to back to front around that stitch. Again, front to back to front around the post of that stitch. We'll then yarn over and pull up a loop, Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops again. We'll now double crochet in the next stitch. So we're skipping this first stitch. This is a stitch we just worked. We'll double crochet in the following stitch. Just like that. And we'll alternate those two stitches down the line. So now we need to do a front post treble crochet around the following double crochet. We'll skip this double crochet here and work our post around the following stitch. Remember to yarn over twice, insert your hook around the post of the stitch, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two once more. Double crochet in the following stitch, and front post double crochet around the double crochet two rows below. We'll repeat that across the row and we should end up with a double crochet in our very last stitch. Our next row starts with a chain one and this is where we'll single crochet across the row. So place one single crochet in each stitch across the row and then you can chain three and turn and we'll start the following row of our pattern repeat. So we need to offset our pattern. So we're gonna start with a chain three, turn our work, skip the single crochet at the base of our chain, and we're going to start with a double crochet in the following stitch. Now we need to do a front post treble, so we'll yarn over twice, find the double crochet two rows below, and we'll work around the post of that stitch. Double crochet in the following stitch, and front post treble crochet around the next double crochet two rows below. You'll notice that we do not place a post stitch in another post stitch. Instead, we offset these stitches to give you that beautiful alpine stitch look. We'll continue this stitch pattern across the row until we have two stitches left, and then we'll place a double crochet in each of those two stitches. The next row will be your single crochet row, and then the pattern starts all over again. This is a four row repeat, and you should end with one of your front post stitch rows. Sadly, I don't have any patterns worked in the Alpine stitch, but I was able to find a few online that look promising. Search sites like Ravelry or Pinterest for the Alpine stitch worked into blankets, hats, gloves, and even clothing items. Shells and fans are easy to make in crochet. Simply place several stitches into the same stitch or space for this dainty look. The basic shell pattern we're trying today alternates groups of double crochet stitches with individual single crochet stitches in a two row repeat. The shells nestle into one another, creating a closed fabric that has great drape. We'll kick things off with a slip knot on our hook 
and then chain any number of chains that is a multiple of six plus two. Then we'll find the second chain from the hook and single crochet into that chain. Then we're going to skip the next two chains and place five double crochet into the following chain. So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, and five. Now we'll skip two chains. Here's one and two, single crochet in the following chain. Skip the next two chains, one and two, five double crochet in the chain after that. We'll repeat the stitch pattern across the row, placing our very last single crochet in the final chain. Now we can start the first row of our two row repeat, beginning with a chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. We'll now turn our work and find the single crochet at the base of our chain three, and we'll place two double crochet into that single crochet stitch. Here's one and two. Now we'll skip the next two stitches and place a single crochet in the following stitch. Skip each of the next two stitches and place five double crochet in the next stitch, which is a single crochet. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. Here's four and five. We'll repeat that down the line, so our next step is to skip two stitches and single crochet in the following. Now I'm coming to the end of my row where I'll skip the next two stitches and place three double crochet in my final single crochet stitch. So here's one, here's two, and three. And that completes the first row of our two row repeat. For the second row of our repeat, we'll start with a chain one and turn our work. We'll single crochet in the stitch right at the base of our chain. Then we'll skip two stitches and place five double crochet in the next stitch, which is a single crochet. So here's one, two, here's three, here's four, and five. By now you can probably guess that next we'll skip two stitches and single crochet in the following, and then we'll skip two stitches again and five double crochet in the following stitch. For one, two, three, four, and five. We'll now skip two stitches, and our last stitch was our turning chain. We'll place a single crochet in the top of our turning chain. To continue with the shell stitch, repeat rows one and two of the two row repeat. There are dozens of variations on the basic shell stitch that we learned today. You can find those variations in clothing like this gorgeous top or in accessories like this adorable hat. The granny stitch is one of those iconic stitch patterns that has become synonymous with crochet. It's a variation on traditional crochet mesh. The only stitches you need to know are double crochet and chains, but I like to use a version that I learned from Sarah Jane of Bella Coco that involves a row of single crochet stitches at the base. I think this gives the final swatch a gorgeous and polished look. Let's give it a try. We'll start our setup row with a slip knot on our hook and chain any multiple of three plus two. We'll begin by finding the third chain from our hook and place a single crochet in that third chain. 
We'll then place a single crochet in the following chain and each chain down the line. Now we'll get into the first row of our three row repeat, beginning with a chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. Place one double crochet in the stitch directly at the base of that chain three. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches and place three double crochet in the following stitch. Here's one. Oh, let me try that again. <laughs> skip two, three double crochet in the following stitch. There's one, there's two, and there's three. And we'll repeat that across. Skip two, three double crochet in the following. Skip two, three double crochet in the following. We'll skip two and place three double crochet in the following again. Now we're at the end of the row. We'll skip the next two stitches and place two double crochet in that chain two space that we skipped there at the beginning of the row. So just squeeze your hook in there wherever it fits and place two double crochet at the end of this row to complete the first row of our two row repeat. For the second row of our repeat, we'll start with a chain three, which also counts as a double crochet, and turn our work. Now we'll want to skip these stitches at the base of our chain, and we're looking for the next space. We're going to place three double crochet down into that space. Here's one, here's two, and three. And we'll repeat that down the line, placing three double crochet in the spaces between three double crochet groups. So three double crochet go here, there's two and three. Three double crochet in the next space. There's one. Here's two. And three. Let's repeat that down the line. Another space here with one, two, and three double crochet. We have one last space, which also gets three double crochet stitches. We'll end the row by placing one double crochet in the top of our turning chain. And that's row two of our two row repeat. Now let's do those one more time together. The first row of our repeat starts with a chain three, which does count as a double crochet. We'll turn our work and place another double crochet in the stitch at the base of our chain three. We'll now skip over to the next space between three double crochet groups and place three double crochets there. There's two and three, and we'll repeat that down the line, placing three double crochets in the spaces. There's one, there's two, and three. Three double crochet in the next space. Three double crochet in the following space. We'll skip the space before the last double crochet and place two double crochet in the top of our turning chain. There's one, and here's two. And that completes the first row of our two row repeat. Let's do the second row. Begin with a chain three, which counts as our first double crochet. Turn your work and place 
three double crochet in this first space. Here's one, here's two, and three. And three double crochet in each space down the line. Three double crochet go into the last space. Here's two and three. And the very last double crochet goes in the top of the turning chain. Just one stitch right here. You'll repeat rows two and three to your desired length for the granny stitch. You can easily incorporate the granny stitch into blankets, hats, and scarves. If you need some inspo to get you going, check out my Daphne afghan which uses the granny stitch in two row stripes or the Joan granny sweater which uses the granny stripe for the sleeves. The final stitch we'll try today is the simple wave stitch. Waves and chevrons are an old standby in crochet, giving the effect of a complicated stitch pattern without actually being complicated. We'll mainly use double crochet stitches with a couple of increase and decrease stitches, but don't let that scare you off. Once I show you how the stitch pattern really comes together, you'll be kicking yourself for not having tried it sooner. We'll kick things off with a slip knot on our hook, and we'll have a starting chain that is a multiple of 10 plus 4. Now we'll find the fourth chain from the hook. Here's 1, 2, 3, and 4, and place a double crochet in that fourth chain. We'll now double crochet in each of the next three chains as well. So here's 1, here's 2, and 3. We now need to make the valley of our chevron, so we're going to double crochet three together. Here's how you do it. Yarn over the hook and pull up a loop in the next chain. Yarn over and pull through two of those loops. Now we'll yarn over, pull up a loop in the next chain. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull up a loop in the chain after that. Yarn over, pull through two loops. You now have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all four of those loops. That is your decrease. Next, we'll double crochet in each of the next three chains. So here's one double crochet. Here's two. And three. Now we need to make the peak of our chevron. So we're going to place three double crochet in the next chain. So here's one, go into the same chain for two, and back into the same chain for three. And this is the repeat down the line. Double crochet in each of the next three chains. There's one, two, and three. Now we need to do our decrease again over the next three chains. Yarn over, pull up a loop in the first of those chains. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop in the next chain. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop in the following chain. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook. Now we'll double crochet in each of the next three chains. There's one. Here's two and three. We have one chain left and we need to place two double crochet there to end the row. There's one and two. That's the setup row for our wave stitch and thankfully it only has a one row repeat. Let me show you what that repeat looks like. We'll start with a chain three that counts as our first double crochet, turn your work, and place a double crochet in the stitch at the base of the chain. Double crochet in each of the next three stitches. There's one, there's two, and three. And now we'll decrease over the next three stitches. We know we're in the right place because the decrease from the previous row is right in the center of those three stitches. Start with a yarn over, pull up a loop in the next stitch, then yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop in the following stitch. 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop in the stitch after that, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through all four of the loops on the hook. And that completes your decrease. Double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Here's two and three. And we'll place three double crochet in the following stitch. We know we're in the right place because the center of the increase from the previous row is right under our hook. So three double crochet to go there. And we'll continue in this wave pattern across the row to our very last stitch. Here at the last stitch, we'll place two double crochet in the top of that turning chain. So there's the first, and here's the second, and that completes the row. We'll repeat this row for the remainder of our wave pattern. If wave stitch patterns are your jam, then try out my Mocha Ripple Afghan or the Autumn Skies Afghan. Both of these are free patterns on my blog just waiting for your special touch. So what did you think of these stitches? Have you seen them before or are you trying them for the very first time? And what kinds of projects do you like to make with these timeless stitch patterns? Let me know down in the comments. Practicing crochet stitches is one of the best ways to grow your skills. If you enjoyed this video, try either of the two stitch tutorials that just popped up on your screen or check out the patterns that I linked down in the description. Thanks so much for joining me for a little crochet break and I hope to see you back here real soon. Bye for now.